Hey my siblings, as I promised in the previous video, today I will be talking to you about my UWC journey. After my application to study was successful, I left. It was before um, SA Road Link was written off the roads, so I took Road Link. I had 800 rents on me. Um, I'll break it down to you. 300 rents was supposed to be for food, 300 rents uh, for rent, yeah, 300 rents for rent in Cape Town in Belleville so um, the 200 rents was for pocket money for the whole month my best friend had already helped me um, with organized um, accommodation so I left and I get to the place I meet the landlord and he gives me a mini tour on the premises now it's time to, to talk about rent he tells me rent is 1650 and in addition to that, I had to pay deposit year 1650 Now I'm, 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 I'm stressing because I only, like I said, I only had 800 rents. I didn't know where I was going to get like 3,300 rents. But um, immediately after I spoke to the landlord, I called my uncle. I didn't want to call home because I knew that I knew they didn't have the money. So I called my uncle and I explained to him. And he said he would make a plan, which he did. The next morning, he, he sent the money and I paid rent. But now I'm stressed because what's going to happen in the next um, 10 to 11 months? Because I knew that at home, they weren't going to have 1650 1, every month. So now I'm worried. I, I, I really was worried. And on top of that, I'm at this commune. I stay with these people who already come from big cities my roommate was from durban and um the rest of the other girls were from Jobek. one of them had just arrived from the usa she she's she's south african but she had worked in usa for for two years before before um cape town so now i stay with these people they have everything like i could tell that they had everything figured out so now again a little girl from small town everyone else already like they're already used to a big city again like i like guys i i was like i looked lost and um the next day i had to go to campus because in a little week you know most first years we have to go early so that but by orientation so that was the case um so I get to campus and it's Leone, it's this huge place. Everyone is fluent in English and not a cafe. So um, I get there and uh, they, they, allocated, uh, they allocated us in different groups. So because everyone else was so fluent and everyone else like, like they look like they have this figured out. Cool guys, I... I don't remember ever feeling that small in my life and you know when 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 in high school you're from high school and you see you were seen as one of the smartest learners and teachers always validated you and you get to this place where you feel like no one sees you and at that like when when you're a teenager I don't know if if that's the case with other people but with me at the time I, I fed on the validation that I got from my teachers like it gave me so much confidence even when even when I went to Cape Town That's what made me believe that I could get the law degree. That's what made me made me believe that I Could actually make it it made me believe that I had it in me because in high school I would like our teachers had that That thing of always encouraging us that thing of always saying I believe in you and I know that you're going to do I knew I know that you're going to do this so that that thing you feed on it as a child and it keeps you going and then you get to this place where you feel like nobody sees you you like you feel extremely small because everyone else is just busy with their lives no one has the time to pat you in the bag and say you, you can do this you're the you're the only person like it's your when you get to university it's your responsibility to give to keep yourself going it's your responsibility to make sure that you make it happen you can watch motivational videos you can watch what whatever but the responsibility to make it work lies with you and with you alone unlike in high school where there was always someone to say do your homework do this do that in varsity they don't care your future is here 
Like when people say your future is in your hands, as cliche as that may sound, may sound, guys, it's like that. In varsity, it's here. Like if 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 you if you can't push yourself, nobody will. Nobody's going to. You you're going to end up dropping out. So I get there and I feel extremely small. It's my first time. At, it was my first time at university prep premises but my first time at uwc the first time at varsity was with, at u of when i was writing my nbt and then that that was my second time so i get there and everyone else they most of them are driving if they're not driving they're getting dropped off well, well like it's like that so i was like you know what instead of just instead of of going to the whole group i'll just isolate myself because i can see where they are going so i'll just go there and then when they explain where this is and stuff like that i'll just make sure that i'm near enough to hear what's been said but far enough from the rest of the group so that i don't have to feel small so um as i'm standing aside this this girl comes to me, Brenda. She greets me. At first, I was very reluctant. She's trying to converse, and I'm very reluctant because I'm thinking, oh, she's one of the richest ones. What lot of bonds are it? now I know this place. So I'm like, no, I'm not going to waste my time with this. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that to myself. But then she was very nice. Like, she, she was she was nice. She spoke to me. And then we became friends, Le Brenda. To this day, we, 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 are, still, we are still friends. So whenever I wanted something, I would send Brenda. Because I started when when I when I first stepped at Varsity and I realized just how 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 diverse it is. I think that's why it's called university. It's probably because of the diversity in it. Oh, buzz, darling, buzz. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I. I, I became really really um, I had this inferiority complex and I was constantly feeling small and like I was constantly feeling like I was not good enough to 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 be at university so Brenda was always there whenever I wanted something Brenda was always there so she then asked me if I had already no it was before registration but it was I think it was a day before registration so she was asking if I have the money for registration and stuff like that. And then I was like, no, I'm going to get a buzzery. So now she asked like a buzzery from where? So like I said in the previous vid video, I was the first person at home to go to university. And no one at home knew anything about, about varsity. No one at home knew anything about, about, um, about buzzeries, how you get them. So my cousin had told me that because my results were so good, I qualified, automatically qualified for buzzery. So when I get to university, they will just direct, direct me to um, their financial offices and I would get a buzzery. I know like now it sounds so crazy, but at the time it made sense. So now I'm think, I'm, t I'm, ex I'm trying to explain to Brenda that um, I'm, go I'm getting a buzzery automatically. So Brenda is so confused. Like, how do you get a buzzery automatically? Like, did, did you make it to the top 100 at, at Free State? What's going on? So I'm like, no. Like, I, I showed I showed her my results. And then she also showed me hers. And then she's like, but I, I'm not going to get a buzzery. Um, my parents are going to pay for me. So now she explains how this these things work. Because, yeah, now, like, at home, um, people went to varsity. So she, she already knew what to expect from university. So, guys, yo, now you're confused. I don't have money for res for registration. And re registration started the next day. Whew, I, guys, I wanted to go back home. I, I, I remember getting to the commune and crying so much and asking myself why I thought I had what it takes in me to, to get a degree. Why, uh, why I thought... I would even make it in Cape Town, and that um, that that buzzery situation, and being at a place where everyone else was eating the things that I only saw on TV, and having classmates that know that that are fluent in English, like everything. You know, when you're still a child, it's almost as if affect man. Even the smallest of things, because for me now those things that i used to worry about at the time they don't matter anymore but at the time they did and they did a lot like yo, i remember crying so much and i remember thinking to myself maybe i should just go back home but while i'm crying i'm thinking to myself but if i go back home 
I, I, I would like my grand would be so disappointed because after my mom passed away, my grand took over. My maternal, my maternal grandmother was taking care of me, and when I left, guys, if 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 you come from humble beginnings, you will, you will agree with me that once you you pass well enough to make it to university or college. Or like once you you take the next step that gives your family hope that uh, you will be the face of the family like that one person who's going to put the family on the map like that one person who's going to who's going to like who's going to give the family that dignity so when I left home I could tell like my grand had that like she was so excited she had that hope that this like this is it my child is going to be a lawyer this is it and it's, it's going to happen so I could see the the excitement and the hope in her eyes so imagine living like that and and my grand is happy like that when I leave and then I come back so I I, I couldn't I couldn't do that to my grand I thought in as much as this place makes me feel like I'm not good enough in as much as I also feel like I'm not good enough I I don't think my grandmother deserves the stress that me going back home would cause her you know and i was like i'll i'll i'll, I'll just learn to ask questions because at that time i was always so scared to ask questions because i i didn't want to be seen as stupid so and i think that's the case with with most people uh we are scared to ask questions because we don't want we don't want people to think we are fools but when you ask a question you are a fool only for that time but after that you at least you have some information you know something but if you don't know in, if you don't know something and you're scared to ask a question you will spend the longest time not knowing you get what i'm saying so at that time i was like you know what uh, i'm just going to take this i'm, I'm just going to I'll ask Brenda maybe Brenda knows and if she doesn't know I know she will ask someone else who will help me and then I, the next day when I got to campus I asked I asked her how I, I can register and everything and then she explained she told me that I can apply for NSFAS she helped me and we went and we applied and it was successful I think I applied this morning and later that day or the next day because at that time applications were processed very fast especially for first years so i managed to register and yeah first year happened and i passed but another mistake that i made i didn't know that when um you have to apply for nsfas every year i had applied that year and i thought because i passed i automatically qualified for the next like you would think with everything that was happening when i got there i would want to know things so that i don't so that i don't i'm not again i'm not in a position where i don't know things but i but i still didn't like i still didn't know and second year i go i go to varsity and they tell me that they asked me if i had applied for nsfas the previous day the previous year and i tell them no I didn't and they're like no you were supposed to apply last year so that this year when you come back you will know whether or not your um, your application was successful and then I'm like but I passed all my modules and they're like so and then I'm like I didn't know that I I had to apply and then the lady who was helping me said and right now it's already too late because now we are dealing with first years and because you're not a first year you you can't apply you were supposed to have applied last year I had I had to go back home and yeah i did I, I i went back home i took another gap year and while during that during that time i spent i spent most of the time trying to find bursaries and i applied like i applied a lot i applied a lot and when i didn't get any responses i was like now i don't know what to do and then um that year ended and in jan now i'm thinking meaning i'm not going back to university again so this one time i'm sitting with with this girl that i know and i'm explaining to, we were both talking about how we did how we didn't get bursaries and stuff and then she's like but why don't we just go to lesedi fm because people always people always go to lesedi to to ask for help and then i'm like yo imagine being on air and asking for money no um i'm not going to do that and then she's like but what do you have to lose because in as even if people laugh at you the people who are going to laugh at you the, it's probably people who have their degrees it's probably people who are already studying for their degrees it's always probably people who who don't want to study or do anything they're just sitting at home so imagine if if you're going to let abantu bazotini get to you uh, what's going to happen like five years down the line 
they won't be there. They will love today. They will love that day when you speak on air. But then after that, they will be gone. What's going to happen? What are you going to do? Because you won't have your degree. Only because people laughed at you. And she made sense. And she managed to convince me. And we arranged that we will be going to Lesedi FM. The next Monday, we woke up so early in the morning. I remember we took a 6 o'clock bus to to Bluefo to Blue to Bloemfontein. Then we get there and uh, uh, at the time we thought that Chomani Chomani was in Bloemfontein Studios, Kanti, he was not. So we had to sit and wait for Ndati Tusomotawung and we got there at about past 7. Ndati Tusomotawung, I think it was 12 or 1 o'clock at the time. So we had to wait. We didn't have money for lunch. We didn't like we didn't have anything on us besides our our um, metric certificates and supporting documents. So we waited for Ntate Tusum Daung until twelve o'clock until one. I, I don't remember if it was twelve or one, but until that time we waited. And he came shortly before his show was on. So the minute he came, we ran to his car and we wanted to speak to him, but he couldn't speak to us because. Like, it was already time for work. And he was like, no, you guys can wait for me. He didn't know that we had been waiting for long. He was like, you guys can wait for me. I'll make sure that I see you after my show. And we waited. And until 3 o'clock, his show ended at 3. And then after 3, we're like, yo, finally, now we're going to talk to Ntate Tuso. Then Ntate Tuso um, signals us that he has a meeting. Now we have to wait again. I think the meeting was from 3 until half past 4 or 5. I fish I yeah then we waited and and then he came and then we explained to him what we need why we were there and he he was he was he was he was willing to help guys I I don't think like whenever I think about Ndati Tusom Daung I I always become so emotional because uh, that day he he tr like he, he did everything in his power to make sure that he helps because uh, he, he 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 helped us call a lot of numbers to explain to them what we need and when we didn't get help he was like no you can come um the next day and then i'll see what i can do because it was already late and he told us that no it's not safe for you guys to be it's not safe for you guys to be living late so come back again the next day and i'll see what i can do the next day we we go to his offices in the morning and then um he comes to us and then he luckily that day Ntate Isma was uh, was addressing the youth somewhere. We didn't know about that. But Ntate Tusom was like, no, uh, I called a few people. But now um, there's still like no one is offering bursaries at the time. But I also, uh, one of the people that I called had told me that Ntate Isma is somewhere in public addressing the youth. Just run there and um, address Ntate and talk to Ntate Is. And um, Ntate Isma Khashule was still premier at the time we we get there and he was indeed addressing the youth and he was asking like he wanted to know the problems that we have and we i he got to me and i explained to him that i needed a bursary um i completed my first year of law like i explained everything and he he was he was like okay um just leave your leave your documents and your number which i did the next day i i received a message because it was i think yeah it was mid jan somewhere there yeah so um or, uh, registration had already started uh, on campus so i went they i got a message from the premier's office that i need to come and sign a contract guys i was so excited then i i went when I got there, they were like, yo, the contract is not ready yet. But they told us that they had already called various universities to tell them that to give, they gave them our names and then we can go there and register. And then we'll get our contracts later, we'll sign contracts later. And then they, to, they told me that I can go, it's okay, I can go back to, to campus, which I did. I, my grand loaned money and I left. I, I got to campus and... A friend of mine I squatted in my in my friend's room the next day I went to register and I get there and I explained to them that the Basel department said they had already called our universities and they have our names and everything the law faculty was so lost like that didn't happen yo guys I was so hurt I 
I was so hurt. I like yo guys. And then I, 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 I called them. I called the Basel department and I told them that um, UWC says that uh, you didn't call them. And then they're like, no, um, you know what? We will just send you, we will send you um, your Basel confirmation letter with your contract. And then you can register with your confirmation letter. Guys, I waited for that letter. I waited and waited and waited. Like I waited for that letter. And... Um, it, did, it, it, it didn't come like a week ended and the letter didn't come and then uh the following week my friend in who in whose room i was squatting her boyfriend came so i had to find an alternative accommodation and i lied to my friend and i said no i have another friend i'll go sleep at my friend's place but i didn't have so i was like no i'll just leave my stuff um i will just leave my stuff here and then i can go and i can go and sleep at my friend's place i'll shower there and then i'll just come and dress up here she was she didn't have a problem with that she was just okay with the fact that i have a place to sleep but guys i didn't i i slept in the bathrooms i i like from that day and I, I would take a shower in the morning and go to her room and dress and she would give me food as far as she knew i had a place to stay at a friend's so she didn't ask a lot of questions and i slept there and i kept on emailing the basura department asking them when they'd be sending um the basura confirmation letter because now um late registrations had already started and and they were about to end so i didn't have time at all and then they told me that they will they will send it so um all those all that time I was sleeping in the bathroom so um, this one night the next day was the last day of um, the next day was the last day of late registrations so the night before I remember in the bathroom I was unable to sleep I was still a hardcore Christian at the time you know you know that Christian who was always like the Bible all the time, whenever you spoke, and then I'd be like, oh, I rebuke that, I rebuke that spirit. You know, like whenever anyone said anything, it was always the Bible. Like I was a religious Christian. So I was, I was very hardcore. So everything that I did, I, I, I would, it was the Bible. So that day I remember, um, that night I remember I'm sleeping and I, I, I couldn't sleep. So I, I, I decided, okay, let me just pray instead. And I, I was praying and I was saying, God, I have, I have tried everything in my power to get this degree. You have seen how small I had felt in first year. You had seen how I suffered in first year, even before I got um, NSFAS. You saw that even after matric, I couldn't study because I did not write an NBT. So maybe this is just a sign from you that I am not supposed to be doing this. Maybe this is a sign from you that this is not for me. But I want you to know one thing that I love law with everything in me but if there's anything that you would like me to do that is not related to this thing that i love so much it's okay i understand and i'm willing to do whatever it is that whatever it is that you want me to do but i want you to know one thing that wh whatever it is that i will be doing that is not law i'll keep looking back i'll keep wondering how things would would have or could have turned out if i had studied law i would keep looking back so whatever it is that you you want me to do i am going to do that but i want to ask you what type of a father are you what kind of a father are you that would want me to do something that pleases him and not me if you're a father why would you want to be happy when your child is not happy because whatever it is that you would like me to do is something that's going to make you happy but i won't be happy if bringing you glory means me spending the rest of my life looking back then how are you god like guys i cried and i prayed and i prayed and i was like i am willing i told i i, I remember that day as i'm praying i was listening to donny metlake and stand the song says what do you do when when you've done all you can and it feels like it no it's not enough 
when 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 like you've done everything in your power but nothing is working out what do you do and then he says you just stand and let the lord see you through so i i, I prayed and i said i've done everything in my power and i've done all that i can and if you think this law thing is not for me then it's fine i am letting go and and i was done praying and then i had already made peace with the fact that the next morning uh the next day i will be going back home and then in the morning i woke up to a notification from the basri department they had sent the contract with the confirmation letter however it was <clears throat> it was the wrong contract it was a part-time contract and the letter was also a part-time letter so i told i replied and told them that it's wrong it's they sent wrong documents and they were like oh I will, we will send it just now guys i waited and they didn't send it I, I called home and i told them that i am ready i am ready to to come back home and um, my grand loaned money again so that i can get transport to to go back home and um i packed my things i took a shower i went to brenda's room to eat and then after that i i went to they sent money home transport money so i went to 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 book a bus ticket and on my way to book i get i get a notification and then when i checked the notification it was the correct um confirmation letter with a contract guys if if you guys remember that part of the pursuit of happiness where chris had been working so hard and nothing was happening she, and he had struggled and he had no place to stay and then he 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 was doing this internship and it was the last day of the internship and he's well dressed and they call him to the boardroom and when he gets there he he's, ex he's excited he tells them that um he enjoyed the internship like he's talking and talking and talking and he's like today i decided to wear like this because it's my last day um and then um they interrupt him and they say um please wear it again because tomorrow will be your first day if you guys remember his reaction at that very moment when they told him that he's going to start working like he was so happy that he was even teary and there was this part where he keeps on doing this when he's walking around a crowd and he keeps looking if there's someone looking at him that was me at the time because i was i was working to book a bus back home and that very moment i kept on looking if there's someone looking at me and there was no one guys i was so happy i I was so 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 happy and um, I ran to the faculty office because I already had my documents in my bag with me so I ran to the um, to the uh, to the what's this to the faculty office I printed the letter I printed I printed the confirmation letter then I went to register and I was registered and yeah I I study I got a place to stay I I then like yeah second year passed then third year and then finally and then in my final year i was the most depressed final year student ever i remember when final year started i thought to myself now this is the my first step my i mean my last step to getting this degree now the end is near now i see victory now i see the promised land now i I see the treasure that I've been running after for so very long. Now it's, it's, it's almost here. And that thing, instead of making me very happy, it made me very sad. Because my mom won't be there to celebrate with me. So now I'm like, I was really, really, I was, I was, I was, I was really, really sad. Like from the beginning of final year until the end of it, I was so sad that my mom it's not there like if you've ever lost your mother the guys you know the pain like there's just something about losing your mom especially if you guys were very close there's something about losing your mother that that leaves that hole inside of you like you can never really get over the pain you don't get over that the pain of losing your mother you don't yes you will accept it yes you will get used to the idea that your mother is no longer there but you don't like you don't you don't heal entire it will always come back yes there will be days when you feel like you have healed but guys it will always come back when 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 
you succeed at at something and people are congratulating you it hurts because you wonder how things would have been have your had your mom been there so with me in final year it's it was like that like when i started my final year i was that sad like i was constantly crying it was so bad that i even um contacted um um campus support services and i had to go through counseling because it was so bad that's when I, I i i i i discovered that i had depression so that was my very first time about depression because guys i was hurting i i'm not going to lie to you the pain of losing a mother is, is not something that you get used to. It's not something that you heal from. Yes, you get used to it, but you don't heal from that. I mean, this is the person who brought you here, you know. So um, it was really, really sad for me. I remember when I was writing my final year, um, I'm studying. I think it was for my last paper. I was studying and i i was like what's the point what's the point of getting this degree because you won't be here to celebrate with me so i i am i am done i am i'm done and i i stayed in in, in third floor i opened the window whoever whoever planned um those buildings was very wise it was almost as if he or she knew that there would be students like me who would want to commit suicide because i wanted to jump outside the window but that window would open wide enough for for me to get fresh air but not wide enough for me to be able to as to to get out through it so I, I i couldn't do it i wanted to jump but i couldn't do it so i sat down and i'm crying and i'm i'm saying to myself what's the point of doing this i don't want to do this anymore and i thought maybe i should just pack my things and go but i didn't know where to so i'm confused i don't want to do this it's my last paper and um my other papers went so well that i knew that that paper was the decider that i was going to get my degree and i think it was criminal advanced criminal procedure which was my favorite so i knew that i was going to pass it very well so like it was already a done deal that this law degree i am getting it and i i didn't want i didn't want to get anything nice when my mom is not here even my metric farewell i didn't go to my metric farewell because i didn't want to go because my mom is not there so even with with this one i was like i don't want this degree anymore and i sat down and then i'm busy playing music and um it was on autoplay and then this song comes nanini naya ya vosinova guys that song saved my life because listening to the words of that song kept me studying and even on the day that i was writing that exam i i went to the exam room listening to to that song and i told myself that i'm not going to disappoint this person i'm not i'm not wherever she is whether or not she can see me um I'm, I'm i'm doing this i am i am going to do this and i did and i passed and i graduated and in the next video i'm going to tell you guys what happened after my graduation i thank you a lot for watching and i really really hope that if you're a law student and you're watching this guys i'm begging you from the bottom of my heart please watch the next video because i'm going to i'm going to talk about the mistakes that i made that i don't want to see you making i don't want to see anyone else go through everything else that i went through i believe that i went through it so that you won't have to go through it so i'm begging you from the bottom of my heart law student please please make sure that you watch the next video because it's going to open your eyes so that you you do things better than i did thank you so much guys see you in the next video and i hope it will be soon i love you so much to the moon and back